infrastructure issues, as well as protect the Long Island Sound and you know get the planes to have 55 decibels instead of 65 decibels. So I want to bring. I will not support. That, so I disagree on that. Okay. Um, and uh, just as, just as a follow up on the uh, on the uh, um, on Secretary Clinton, do you think that um, uh, she mis that uh, she mishandled? The emails when she was secretary. Of yeah, I mean, she's, she said that she made a stupid mistake and she wouldn't have done it again. She wished she'd done to do it. And she compounded it by not explaining it properly and just taking the hit. I mean, if there's one thing I learned in politics, and I've spoken to people that are a lot smarter than me, is when something is wrong, and you did something wrong, the first thing you do is say, you know what, that was wrong. And you tell the whole story, you explain it, and then you move on to the next thing. And she, you know, she dragged this out for way longer than she should have by not entering it. And I support. Okay, but she did not handle that properly. Thank you. And now she's saying more clearly, you know, I was wrong to have done it. I wish I hadn't done it. You know, but it took forever to get to that point. Okay. I'd like to ask uh, a question I asked before about the uh, new proposal by the National Highway Traffic Safety and Federal Motor Carrier Administration. Now, I don't know enough about that to, to comment on that. You want to put regulations to slow, slow, but is it mainly for trucks, 26,000 yeah, trucks, it's, right? It's mostly the big rigs that very small percentage of them on the road, but and how slow is it? That, that's okay. not determined anyway. I think I read, so that's from anywhere from 60 to 68 miles. I, 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 I can't give an answer. I don't know enough about that. I can't, I can't answer that question. I so let me, um, so just one quick um, last question. Um, the Obamacare or the Affordable Care Act, are there any changes that you would like to see made um, to the law, um, changes to the way it's implemented? What would you suggest? So everybody's knocking Obamacare, Obamacare is horrible, everything. Let's remember something. Okay? We've been talking about health care reform in the United States of America since the 1950s, okay? And President Nixon had the most radical reform of health care proposed in the country, which you would make this look like the most Obamacare conservative thing you've ever seen. And then we had a debate in the last presidential election between Hillary Clinton and Obama like crazy. And then Obama gets elected and he says, we've got to pass, we got to change health care. And everybody says, you're moving to it quickly. So, there are good things that happen with Obamacare, okay? The idea that your kids are covered by your health insurance until you're 25, that's a good thing. That's good for them. 26. 26. Okay, 26. The fact that you can't be denied health insurance for a pre-existing condition, that's a good thing. The fact that you can port your health insurance from one place to another place, that's a good thing. The idea is that the premiums are going up through the roof and then, and then these insurance companies are going out of business in the process. That's a bad thing. And I know from my private sector career that the regulations you have to follow as an employer to show that you're complying with Obamacare are like gargantuan. The paperwork you have to do and the money you have to spend in order to demonstrate that. So I would want to change those type of things. You know, we're never going to have universal health care in America. We're never going to have single payer, okay? Which is probably the best solution. Well, one of the things that's being proposed, right, and I understand that a lot of people don't like it, is the socialism, the long line, and all that jazz. I understand it. And that's why it'll never happen. And the reason it doesn't happen, you know, is because the insurance companies will spend so much money, the pharmaceutical companies will spend so much money to convince everybody that you're so stupid and so out of place and so, you know, you're a communist, but proposing stuff is, is the reason it doesn't change. But the reality is, is we should have, one of the things that uh, Secretary Clinton is proposing is that you give everybody an option to buy uh, Medicare. Because Medicare is so much cheaper than private health insurance right now. And let people buy into it, not just for seniors. Let people buy into the system to expand the government. Not to make it mandated, but make it an option to compete against private health insurance. So just give people an option to, to save money that way. And create the competition. Competition is good. I'm pro competition. We do we have one more question from the audience. Uh, are you pro choice? Yes, I'm pro choice. I'm 100% committed to abortion remaining safe and legal, okay? It's very important. But I also think that we should try and create a society where abortion is more rare. And when I was the county executive of Nassau County, I gave a speech called Common Sense for the Common Good. And the idea behind was that, is that I'm committed to abortion remaining safe and legal. We've been fighting over this for, since 1970. 
the 70s, everybody yelling and screaming at each other. Nobody does anything. So what do we have to do? We have to, number one, we have to prevent unintended pregnancies, okay, which requires education and contraception. You have to convince people to be more careful and not get pregnant in the first place. You have to prevent unintended pregnancies. And that creates a, if we, if we have the pro-life, the pro-choice people to work together to try and prevent unintended pregnancies, think of how much better our, our world would be yeah. instead of just yelling at each other all the time. Right. And I also, uh, uh, and, I, and I hope to fund, fund contraception programs and education programs. And also homes for single mothers. I opened a home for single mothers in my hometown. I, I got the group called Mama's House, and the church rectory was vacant. And I convinced them to lease out the church rectory to a home for single mothers so that women who were faced with a situation where they wanted to keep a baby and raise a baby were not left desperate and alone. So I supported homes for single mothers. And adoption services. Everybody says they're pro-adoption. Nobody's against adoption. But I would talk to my social service workers in the county. First, we're just we're in the county we do social services, like the city does it in New York. Nobody knew how to go about getting an adoption. Everybody needs to do an adoption. You have to go to China to do an adoption. So it was about educating people about how it actually works. So the bottom line is, like so many issues, Everybody wants to just yell and scream at each other and go into their respective corners. I'll finish up with this. Is this my closing or am I doing it? No, no, this is, this is quite a new deal. I'll be too many times. Okay. Things do not happen to get that done because nobody votes in these primaries. Okay, so few people vote in these primaries. To win a Republican primary, you got to go hard to the right. And to win a Democratic Party primary, you got to go hard to the left. So when you try to go to Washington, you end up with these two people at two extremes two groups of people, then nobody wants to get anything done in the middle. That's good to know. Because they're afraid that they're going to have a primary later on with these extremists. So, good luck with your primary, guys. <laughs> 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 it's swiping too many folks. Okay, let me, this is just one of me. I'd like to come back and fix all of you. <laughs> so, back in 2002 and three and four, I was, you know, cut the size of the workforce in Nassau County by a thousand people. I uh, uh, raised, raised property taxes by 19%, 19.4% in the first year in office. Just on the county portion, not the school portion, which is like 65% of your taxes. Uh, but just on the county portion. And I was consolidating departments, and I was doing all these different things, because we've been rated the worst one county in America with the bond rating, what's that, what's that, what's that. I got to do a lot of But I saw that despite all the stuff I was doing to try and fix things and put all these smart people in place, was that our Medicaid costs we're going up by 12 and 13 and 14 percent a year. And New York State is unlike any other state in the country in that the federal government pays for half, the state pays for 25 percent, and the counties and the city of New York pay for the other 25 percent. Everywhere else in the country, it's like half the feds, half the state. New York State is unlike any other place. And our Medicaid costs are two and a half times the cost of the national average. And every year, they put more mandates on, making the expenses go up. And here I am doing all this stuff, making all these tough decisions, picking all these fights with all these people, and Medicaid's going up and I have no say over it. It's a mandate from the state. So I try to get Shelly Silver to listen, and Pete, and uh, not Pete Skelis at the time, uh, Joe Bruno at the time, and nobody listen to us. And I talked to Mike Bloomberg, he was having the same problem in New York City. And Republicans and Democrats throughout the state are having a problem. Even Ed Koch, I don't know about it, he was having the same problem back in the 70s. He said, they don't listen, they don't do anything to you. So I said, we have to defeat a Democrat in assembly and a Republican in the state Senate until they start listening to us, until they start paying attention. And I got beaten up pretty badly for that. I was disinvited to the Democratic National Convention by Shelley Silver. Even though I'd been a delegate for years before that, even though I was a county executive, a Democrat, one of the largest counties in America, and I was disinvited to the convention. I ended up going anyway because I supported the presidential candidate at the time, John Perry. But I had a fight against Shelley and I had a fight against Joe Bruno. And I defeated a local state assemblyman with the Democratic primary, beat him in a primary, David Zinnickman, beat him in Chuck Levine, and I helped defeat a Republican state senator of state New York. But when you want to change the status quo, you have to be willing to take on very powerful people because they don't want to change the status quo. And it's not about, you know, my party right or wrong. Sometimes your party asks for too much and you've got to stand up against your party. And sometimes some group asks for too much. And sometimes it's going to be very hot and bad. It's going to be a tough fight. But you've got to keep on pushing and fighting for the things that you think are right. So thank you very much for having me. And I'll see you in our